Okay, hello dear friends. Good morning. Such a beautiful, beautiful morning. So this is Monday. I have some time, so I come to Stanford University Cantor Museum, and they have one piece of painting of uh, uh, William Pease. And for some reason, they moved it away. And now today, I will see if they are still there. If it is still there, let's go. Here I am, in front of this gorgeous piece. Okay, hello dear friends. Here I will um, report you about the story of this painting or this artist. The first time I met this artist, well, the soul of the artist, he was born in uh, 1718, in 1838 until uh, 1911. He passed away a uh, hundred years ago. And uh, the first time I saw this painting was in Stanford University Cantor Museum. Not exactly this place, or maybe this place, but uh, I was totally blown away or impressed by this artist. He was, uh, this was such a beautiful painting. And then um, <coughs> I went to the Young Muse Museum and I found uh, the same artist, William Keyes. And then I went to Auckland Museum and I found the same artist, um, William Keyes. And mostly the California style landscape. And uh, <coughs> I went to Utah, also found his painting in the art gallery. Usually he paints these very large style paintings very large scale paintings and his work was just uh, fascinating <coughs> and uh, I went to Austin Texas and also found his painting and the other day I was looking for different uh, uh, museum to visit and bump into one museum in St. Mary College, St. Mary College, and they had a big collection of it. And then I started to understand a little bit of the story of it. Let me change my glasses so I will be more comfortable to talk. Okay, so let's walk a little bit closer to this piece of painting. And uh, the author, William Keyes. He was born in 1838. At the age of 11, their family, he came with his family to America, migrated to America. And uh, he, was, uh, uh, he was 11 years old at that time. He was a Scottish and uh, he started to learn uh, painting and uh, I think he started from first from New York and then he came to California and uh, was amazed by the landscape of California, of Sierra Nevada, the Sierra Mountains, and particularly Yosemite and, um, and the redwood trees and this landscape. So if you see this painting, this is not the very late age of his painting. This painting was produced in 1876. So when he was around 40 years old, around that age. And it was kind of his early age. 
and uh, the, 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 the early age or his prime age painting was very much realistic but with his own style but more uh, towards the realistic so you can see the mountain and mountain light now let's get closer and the light of the mountain the cloud and bright there is contrast and they are relatively bright and uh, and uh, very empowering and uh, he became a friend of uh, of John Muir. John Muir was one of the uh, in most important naturalists in America history. Was he that started? There was a John Muir trail, John Muir um, National Park, and uh, they became friends and uh, they go hiking together. They explore together and uh, he did painting John Muir did the explore and uh, <coughs> at that time John Muir particularly um, encouraged him to to keep up this style of uh, realistic painting so at the beginning he was not recognized but uh, after only a couple of his work like this, he got recognized and be he became quite famous of his age. And then there was one um, <coughs> teacher, priest or teacher in St. Mary College and found his work, saw his exhibition and fell in love and started to collect his work. And this uh, teacher, he taught German, he taught different language, taught religion in St. Mary uh, College. I went there yesterday and, uh, and started to collect. And at the end of his life, he donated all his work with one condition that you will show William Keith's work. So, starting from there, the university or the college dedicate one room, as we have seen the William Keyes Gallery, dedicated one room for, for his painting. And that teacher's name was Brother Cornelio, and the, the museum name was Brother Cornelio Art Center. And the family also donated his collections. And uh, so that college become one of the richest collection, permanent collection of uh, his Williams artwork. And this is uh, knowing that news I went to see. And uh, they have changed the exhibition to my surprise or kind of disappointment so uh, the family donated donated to college of uh, berkeley uc berkeley or um, and uc berkeley and uh, the university had uh, a huge collection of uh, of uh, of their And uh, the family uh, and the, the the priest or the teacher's name was Cornelio, and that library was called that uh, museum was called Brother Cornelio Art Center. So they had one of the biggest collection, permanent collection of. Uh, of uh, William Key's artwork. So this is why I went to visit, but to my surprise, there was no, and they had some exhibition. And the family, together with uh, Brother Cornelio, collected a lot of pieces of, uh, of Keith William's work and donated to different universities. 
but to my surprise to their surprise they saw the artwork was in storage and sometimes the artwork was hung in bu in office bureaucratic office so they were very disappointed anyway that's uh, the story and that's my disappointment of uh, this uh, of uh, of what i have seen and i feel this is a true beauty william keys is one of uh, the pioneer california local artist and his uh, his studio was in san francisco so this allowed him to travel around to see the California landscape. And his painting really put his heart and soul and hard work. And you can see his painting not only uh, aesthetically beautiful, but, uh, but uh, scientifically correct, the mountain the mountain shape because because of uh, the, 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 the 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 because of the the earthquake or mountain movement to produce this kind of uh, mountain shape so he has good knowledge he had good knowledge of the geology of the place and depict in the most significant artistic and aesthetical expression. I really, really love this and I hope we will have more chance to see it later on. And this also represents a particular period of art expression. At this time in California, after Hudson River um, Hudson River Art School, there was a very big focus on American landscape, nature, the American wild, the Western wild has this magnificent grandeur that nothing can overshadow its greatness. So this is why human figure or life figure usually painted in very small and in contrast very insignificant weight comparing with the rocks the trees and the little pine sprouts the purpose is to bring the huge nature to the most magnificent stage. And also, from the artistic point, William Keyes, at this stage, being the friend of John Muir, he put a lot of uh, uh, emphasis on depicting the real nature, the real shape. It's kind of botanic drawing or, or a picturing of this place and later on in his later age he changed his style more towards Babizon, the French Babizon or Impressionist and put a lot of uh, artistic element which uh, John Muir didn't like. John Muir told him just to keep on painting as it is. Anyway, that's uh, artistic uh, expression all what I want to see and all what I want to want to express is the regret that fine art, beautiful art should have place in art gallery. Fine art, fine art gallery should leave place for fine art, for this great art that that promoting our love of nature, of uh, our engagement with the nature.
doing landscape painting will help us to produce our to enhance our relation with nature. It is such a pain to to see less and less of this beautiful work in the art gallery. And for this, I sincerely thank Stanford Cantor Museum, put it on, leave it here forever, let people love nature, appreciate a true artist.